Welcome to the 141st episode of the Supernatural Current Studies Podcast. So palindromically paranormal. My name is Jason Knight, host of the show, and with me, as always, is... Oscar Spector. Producer extraordinaire and podcast co-host. Nice. Very nice. I like your air there and an air. The little um, frills. Did you get my palindromically? That's not a word. I, I just rolled with it because I thought it sounded great. Yeah, why is everyone rolling with things? You know, <laughs> I, I get a lot of people out. that roll with things I say and like, oh, and I think they think I think that they they get what I'm saying. And then I ask like something and they're like, well, no, I just I just laugh because you, you said you clearly said a joke. But like, why would you laugh if you don't get the joke? <laughs> <laughs> You're making me think here that I'm being clever. Not only I mean, whatever. Shut up. Um, <laughs> shut 141 up. is palindrome back. Okay. That's, that's not a word, but whatever. That's why but, I said that. Got it. 141. God. Listeners, if you don't want to continue to hear this intro, <laughs> as I pout, go to the show notes. There's a st- time stamp there waiting for you to get you right to the topic. I mm-hmm. said Stein stamp, I think. Yeah, it's okay. It's the Jewish version of timestamp. I get it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Oh, this is going to be a long one tonight. Oh, yeah. How are you? How have you been since the release of Abu Tabar Part 2? Republic of Paranoia. This guy calling it Body Bags 2. Such a (laughs) fucking uninspired fucking title. That's not the title. (laughs) Um, Sorry. That's That's a true romance reference for those who like and watch true romance, the movie. Um, Anyway. It's great. You know, it's funny that uh, that episode came out a day after, I believe a day after July, f- our Independence Day. But we didn't record that, you know, after in the, uh, Independence Day. So a little, uh, I wanted to recap a little bit by saying that hopefully everyone had a safe 4th of July. And I want to say by start by saying that I hope everyone got safe because it was very dangerous by my neck of the woods. And I've heard other people and like other podcasts talk about it because, you know, everyone's saying like, oh, my God, it's Fourth of July, whatever. Um, so clearly it wasn't just my neighborhood, but it was insane here. How was it with you, Jay? It was I mean, yeah, people were doing fireworks and things. We had a nice show from our back. Was it deck. every house in your block, let's say? No, no, definitely not. Definitely okay. Not. That's what I went through. Really? It was. So uh, my brother had this great idea to put the projector on in the backyard. Because we at my parents' house, this is all my parents' house, right? Um, put the projector in the backyard. He has a nifty one, and we he'll get up to his iTunes. And um, we decided to watch Independence Day. Perfect. We actually did, ended up doing that and Terminator Two after. Love it. We couldn't think of something more American than those two movies at the time. So like, yeah, it's just America, right? Um, could barely hear the movies because of the insane amount of fireworks. Wow. It was so I could barely sometimes see it because of the amount of lights from the fireworks. No shit. That was going off seemingly around me. It felt like I was in Nam or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I, I, I can't. Uh, so the fireworks started before I left the house to join my brother in my mom's house. And it was already going off everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Cops are everywhere. <laughs> people everywhere oh, yeah. in the streets. In the big streets. On Elston. The people are fucking, I'm like, you guys are in Elston. Get the fuck out of here. Go to the alley. Go into the alley like everyone else. Um, okay, whatever. And uh, when I got there, the first thing I asked Rob, I was like, is it just me? Or is this year more probably? He's like, yes. <laughs> like, okay. People were sick of being caged up. man. Yeah, and- but even more than recent memory before that, though. Even more than the previous years, it feels like. Wow. And he's like, yeah, it does feel way more than the last five years. It's like someone combined all the energy of five years worth of firework activity they couldn't do or something. And they, they just exploded everything. Everything was in the air. The smell of that gunpowder 
non stop the whole time. Wow. So yeah. So that, that's great. Here it was it was a lot, but it was tasteful. We, mm-hmm. like, I, we, like I said, we got to sit out on the back deck and watch a fireworks show from a few streets behind us. Uh-huh. It was very chill, very nice. It wasn't, no, I saw a couple of fucking zeros flying over the <laughs> <laughs> zeros. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, America, was, uh, man. Yeah, it was one of the most memorable Fourth of Julys, I gotta say. Well, that's good. But, but it was cool watching, you know, Independence Day outside, drinking beer, you know, in the back. It's kind of cool. Hell yeah. So, yeah. Man. Was his name Will Smith? Was such a youngin. He was so charismatic back then. Um, so that's what I did. Hopefully, everyone had a fun time. You had a chiller one. Yes. Yeah, but it was fun, right? It was fun. Yeah, swimming, barbecue, drinks. Yeah. Uh, we had yeah. very little fireworks left over from like two years ago. Oh, you're kidding. Uh, and we wow. let the kids blow those off. Uh, oh, so you nice. didn't go and get new more uh, resupply? You know what? This year, I didn't. I didn't. No big deal. Everyone yeah. else did it for you. Apparently. That's right. Pretty much. Oh, pretty everyone. much. <laughs> there were bottle rocket, you know, bottle rocket sticks all in my pool the next morning from, you know, just oh, people, probably half yeah. from us too, but yeah, uh, yeah. Well, it's, it's all good. It was all fun. So uh, here in the Midwest it's very common to, um, this is something you grew up with just knowing if you were, if you were born here. Uh, it's very common to know that uh, Indiana is the place to go <laughs> yeah. for fireworks. <laughs> That's right. The crossroads of America is useful for a couple things. Being the crossroads of America and buying fireworks. Right. Um, everyone knows that. The second, because Indiana is only like technically the state line is like an hour away from here. Uh, it's perfect. It's fucking great. And I, I guess I have grown up, you know, knowing I have to go there to get the good shit. Yes. So I'm, they must have sold out. And everyone must have done it this week, this year. It's insane. I remember as teenagers, slightly older, yeah. just making those runs to Indiana, worried mm-hmm. we're going to get busted at the, at, at the, the border. At the border. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hiding the fireworks anywhere we could in the car. Yeah. And everything. Stadiums yeah. are more worried about fireworks, it felt like, as a teenager, than drugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it did. Right. It did. I remember feeling that. And I know that's stupid to feel that, but <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You know, you're right. Uh, that, that is funny. Indiana crosswords and fireworks. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Nothing else. Who's your guest that basketball, whatever. Um, OK. Um, next up here, my my docket, I want to mention that you, you wanted me to mention, too, is that I got those uh, movies in. Oh, that I great. mentioned, I think, in the last episode where like on a whim, I got these supposedly very hardcore movies that I can only get in physical format, uh, Blu-rays in this case. And there are two movies, recent releases, so they're, they're not old movies. They're not remastered 60s Italian, whatever. It's not that. It, they're, all, they're, all, they're American as far as I know. <laughs> as far as I, I haven't seen them yet, so. Um, you were going to say something? Yeah, I'm just to rehash, if listeners remember, Love Dump. Yeah, that was one of the titles. Love Dump has arrived. Right, and the other one, do you remember the other one's title? I don't. It's called Sadistic Pleasures, which <laughs> sounds really bad at my end. But like, I don't think it gives me a good, what do you call it, stock options for people that are buying my stock. Um, yeah, so I got these two. They're in my hand right now. They came in the mail, and I haven't seen them yet because I'm waiting for, well, well, nothing really. I'm just waiting for the right mood to watch a particularly crazy horror movie, you know? Yes. Uh, so, or at least a new one. So. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure, dude, that by ordering those, you are now on some watch officially list. on a watch list. Yes. Oh, okay, cool. I mean, so, I've always wanted to be in one. So, so could we read the descriptions <laughs> you want me to for read these movies, please? Yes. And then yeah. I would like to uh-huh. take it one step further. Since this is an audio medium, right. I need you to describe. Oh, I am not going to describe covers oh, of these no. gems. I will try. Okay, here's a uh, the description for Love Dump. <laughs> Jesus, what a fucking title. <laughs> God. I can't listen to it. That, that title is that title is both funny and horrifying. It truly um, is. Yeah. A serial killer continues their murder spree and acts of depravity in Los Angeles. That's it. That's the that title. That's, That's, it, it, for the title. That's yeah. it for the title. That's it for the synopsis. What does the disc itself say? Oh, you want me to read? Okay. I shouldn't have told you that, I guess. No, I just gave you all this fanfare. Uh, one second here. I'm just getting it. Rated X, it says. And then it says, the following second release of Love Dumb comes direct from the, the place I got it from. I don't want to say just in case. Uh, limited to 666 copies. 
All models shown in this film are over the age of 21. <laughs> oh, my God. Which kind of gives it more heft. It really you know, does. That information kind of gives it more heft, more, more weight to it. And it's, so X-ra- this, it's X-rated. It is X-rated. They both are. Um, and Sadistic Pleasures does not have, on the cover or the inside, does not have a plot synopsis. Oh, no. It just says that it's gore. XX or rated X. So, yeah. And uh, there you go. They're both in color. I know that. <laughs> Dude, I don't even know where to begin. Okay. Could you? So, yeah. First of all, I don't know that I've ever seen an X rated film. Yes, you have. Like, I don't think porn is X, is it? No, no, no. Oh, I see what you mean. No, I mean, I've shown you an X rated horror film. Was that Cannibal Holocaust? No, no, that was actually rated at the time, yes. But also was Midnight Cowboy. No, I mean something more modern, something actually X rated, I would say was um Visitor Q. Oh, that was rated X? I'm pretty sure it was. Had no idea. I'm pretty so sure. I have seen an X rated film. Yes. Visitor Q for sure. Has to be. Look at the stuff that happens in that movie. Yeah, that movie. Do you remember it? From necrophilia to milking. It's insane. It's oh, insane. the milking. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I need to drink whiskey. It happens. Uh, <laughs> yeah, whiskey. Visitor Q <laughs> listeners. Oh. So, so okay. So, it's not just these two movies, but something clicked in me where, like, I want to have a horror movie renaissance this year, or at least for the next few weeks. Let's see how long it lasts. So, what I did is that not only did I get these two movies, right? I I rented some, bought others, and. <clears throat> downloaded others that I couldn't find <laughs> anywhere else um, online. And I got myself a collection of movies that I've heard awesome things, like as in they're horrifying, awesome things about, and some I haven't seen in a long time that I want to revisit. And one of them being Visitor Q. I haven't seen it in a while. So okay. I'm going to put that on the watch list. I'm going to watch that at some point. Um, here are the other movies. And I don't know what they're all about. I have not seen them. I just heard that they're fucked up. So I'll tell you the ones I've seen. Okay. Okay. So here are the movies. Marrowbone. Marrowbone. Oh, I've seen that. Okay. I heard it was a pretty good movie. I don't know. The Empty Man? Haven't seen it. Uh, there's a <gasps> oh, French no. movie. I did see Empty Man. It's like a, a faux documentary, isn't it? I have no idea. These are just yeah, uh, I, these are movies I hear that some of the better ones from recent years. I don't okay. know. Okay. That I haven't seen. Uh, this is a French movie called uh, Inside, or it translates to Inside from 2007. Uh, there's a movie from 1971 called The Devils. Hmm. I have not seen that. This one I have seen. Sallow. Have you seen Sallow? I haven't. <gasps> have you never seen Sallow? No. Have you heard of it? No. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Here's the full title. Sallow or The 120 Days of Sodom. Ooh. It's from 1975. Oh, it's a 75 movie about Sodom? That's got to be X-rated. Oh, uh, it's beyond that for sure. I'm sure. It's got to <gasps> be something. Oh, I don't I mean... It's been a long time. I seen. I saw it like during my first horror movie renaissance when I when I first saw Martyrs and shit. Um, anyway, here's the other one. Lilia Forever. I heard it's really fucked up and fucked up and bizarre and stuff. I haven't seen it. This one I have seen. Snowtown Murders. Hmm, never heard. Have you seen the Snowtown Murders? No. Oh my god, that's so good. It's from 2011. It's Australian. That's like one of their not their first, but like one of their ten pole really good horror movies from that country. Okay. Uh, this one is a trilogy, I think, of movies called August Underground. Hmm. hmm. And last but not least, from this year, I think, or last year, Girl in the Basement, I heard is pretty fucked up or I don't know, something. Uh, but I don't know enough about that one. And then I have a ton of other horror movies in general, like kind of a Holocaust I might include as a rewatch. I might include, uh, remember that movie Imprint with the head in the... Yeah, you remember that. I yes, you do. Do I? From the guy from The Untouchables, the bad guy. He's uh, he goes to Japan and through history, through like stories he's told of what happened to his love. Um, that she is like a prostitute in 1400s Japan. Oh no! And she gets like, remember that girl with the hand coming out of her head and shit? I don't. You do? yes, I you honestly do. don't remember this. Yes, you do. But I showed it to you. Jay. Uh, I'm gonna <laughs> well, have to see it again. Yeah. I don't know how you forget fucked up movies like that, but anyway, <laughs> that tells you a lot about me. And I saw a new movie called The Farm yesterday. That was one of my one of my never seen before movies. It came out last year. I think it's from Sweden. Oh my god, that was pretty cool. It's a short movie. 
It's about imagine a farm where the livestock is human beings. Okay. Yep. <laughs> All right. In every sense of in every sense of that word. So like everything you can imagine. And it's about this couple, obviously, that goes in there and they get kidnapped by it and it's through their perspective mainly. But it's also not it's really through the perspective of the farm. And it's really fucked up. It's like very culty and they're all wearing masks. You don't know anyone's face. It's very kind of fucked up and 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 yeah, interesting. Anyway, I saw it. Check it out. Okay. All right. Anyway. So yeah, I'm going through a horror movie renaissance. It's, it's about time I update myself, is what I'm saying. I could yeah. stand for a horror movie renaissance. I like that idea. Yeah, I should get you to come over here so we can watch these movies or something. Some of them I can't. Some of these I can't send you. I can send you some of them. Uh, I don't know if you can deal with it, but I, I don't. don't know. Yeah, I don't. The, the love dump and the other one. I don't know if I want to see those. But uh, could you possibly describe one of the box covers to those movies for our our mm-hmm. listeners? I thought you were gonna forget. No, you didn't. Forget. <laughs> okay. Okay. Could we do love dump? Oh, yeah, that sounds so bad. It does. So it's actually four different illustrations, and they're like they're, they're in color, but they're like colored in and drawn. They're not like pictures. Okay. Okay. So I imagine this must happen in the movie, or maybe not, or it's just portraying how horrifying it is by showing you different images. I have no idea. But it's uh they're all showing this killer, I guess, the torturer, let's say, the sadistic murderer, right? Serial killer. Um on the first picture we see um a victim's head in a duffel bag. <laughs> I feel like I've seen that before. Okay. Blood everywhere. She looks bruised, but I can't tell if that's makeup or not. Um, the bottom picture from that same cover uh, has a... <laughs> Why am I saying this? <laughs> okay. Clearly the killer is at knife point making the victim suck him off. There you go. Love numbers. It's, uh, yeah. And then the, the the ones in the back, I really rather not describe... But it's more graphic and more gory. It's a lot of blood everywhere. A lot of red. I'm just going to say that. A lot of red. I'm yeah. wondering if this is, uh, you know, a real souped up version of like Eli Roth torture porn. Hostile torture porn. Right. Well, yeah. Well, that was always my problem with some of these movies is that there's that whole renaissance from from Saw and Hostile that a lot of people thought they all they had to do was be very gory without any real whatever. And the problem with those movies is that they do become uninteresting because I I prefer a great story. You know, if that great story also has fucked up gory and shit, I'm so down. I'm down. Yeah, yeah. Me too. But like, I would love those movies. That's why I love movies like Visitor Q, but don't like Saw 17. Um, So, yeah. So I don't know where this one fits. And it probably doesn't fit much because I said the plot description is so, so minute that I think it's just very point and click kind of thing yeah but uh, we'll see then i'm gonna I'm have to like i mean it's all about the craft of the gore right i have no idea well maybe could you give us an update once you watch it or maybe we do a watch party for patreon the only way that we can do a watch party on these movies is if you come over here and we watch it together yeah we could do that okay that's the only way we could do it and i would love that of course i would do it in a heartbeat so yeah, that's been my 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 recency stuff. Hopefully, you don't think less of me. But you know what? If you listen to the show, you shouldn't be surprised that your hosts here are into horror movies. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you don't like it, I hear there's baking podcasts by Martha Stewart. She, isn't she in jail? Or is she? No, she's probably out. Right now. No, yeah, I think she's. She's out. white. She's out. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had too much going on. I'm going to be completely honest, just the 4th of July and work, nothing, nothing too interesting. So I'll probably just get into the contact info if that's cool with you. Let's do it. The easiest way to get in contact with the Supernatural Occurrence Studies podcast is by visiting our website, www.chicagoghostpodcast.com. Why? Why? From ChicagoGhostPodcast.com, you can get to all of our social platforms, including Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, Patreon. And in case you didn't know, we have a Patreon. It's Chicago. Go- oh my God. <laughs> Patreon.com forward slash Supernatural Occurrence Studies Podcast. Or go to this episode show notes and click on the Patreon link. It'll take us right to you for just $5 a month. You get access to an entire la- entire library. I need a break of shows that will never appear on this 
public podcast feed. Uh, so what do you say? Go to Patreon, support your favorite podcast. You can oh, also get a, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Call the phone number 872-529-0767. That Chicago area code Oscar 872-529-0767. Uh, I'm drinking Brothers Bond whiskey. It is probably one of the best I've ever had. I'm, I'm just saying. So Oh, now we're sponsoring uh, alcohols right after we give fake phone numbers. I didn't know we were doing that. You know, that reminded me of something while you were spewing some of that lie, meaning the, the phone nonsense. number. The nonsense, right. Um, is that I, I forgot to mention that um, I had a, not a fan, a, a kind of a friend, uh, an older friend, I guess. I haven't seen her in a while. But she came to the store recently and she was telling me that uh, she really liked the two-parter of Abu Tobar and all that. Nice. So now that you mentioned the phone number, I am telling Lyra, go call that phone number and tell us a joke. There. I'm telling her to do something. Lyra. Hopefully, hopefully she listens to it. That's it. Just a shout out to a friend who liked the last two episodes. Thank you, Lita. Um, Give us a call. Yeah. Oscar, can we take a break, please? No. Let's just sit here for a while. Oh, wait, that's <laughs> taking a break. <laughs> let's just power right through it. No yeah. breaks. No, no breaks. Yeah, let's take a break. Listeners, welcome back to the show. Well, the lights are turned down low, the ceremonial candle is lit, and the drinks are flowing. Let's start this show. So tonight we're going to be talking about a historical heavy hitter. Have you ever heard of Ursabet Bathory, Oscar? What was the name again? Ursabet. Gesundheit. Um, yes, but only through you. Really? I mean, you told me something about her. It's a, it's a her, right? <laughs> it is. Yes. Thank you. Um, when, I don't know if I should say this, but the only thing I know about her is that she is the inspiration, I guess, from um, from that one scene in uh, Hostel Part 2. Oh, right. The movie Hostel Part 2, Eli Roth's, should I say more or should I stop there? Well, I have it written into the script. I actually use that as oh. a point. To, okay, my bad. No, it's I'll, totally okay because maybe that's where a lot of people know about her from. Um, that's all I know. That's all I know. Exactly. And I think you're the one who told me that. Uh, okay. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. I found this really interesting. Um, I've always known about Ursabit or Elizabeth Bathory. Uh, but doing this this heavy research on her, I found out a lot of stuff I didn't know. And I was kind of surprised uh, at the end of my research and the end of my script of how it kind of turns out and the, the questions that were left over. Ooh. It's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Can't, can't wait now. Mm -hmm. So for all these centuries, maybe we were wrong. I don't know. I just don't know. Hmm. But it's still a great story. Cool. And to cover a, a female serial killer. Uh, I don't think we've done that yet. So is this our first? I didn't know she was a serial killer until right now. So that's that. That's something. Um, is this our first though? Yeah. Right. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Wow. We never been close, and we had to go back to the 17th century to find one. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. We never did Lizzie Borden, but that's not a serial killer, right? That's so we did Lizzie Borden. Good point. We did Lizzie Borden when we actually went to the house and we took the tour and interviewed the docent. Uh, yes, for the podcast when we did the um, when we did the Massachusetts, the Bridgewater Triangle, yes. series of releases. That's when we covered right her. Long time ago, like three. So you're right. We did live a very long time ago. Yeah. So we did cover one once. You're right. I stand no. corrected. Okay. See, uh, see, my memory works sometimes. Usually, no, it's just very to good. make fun of you. Because <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> I completely forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, you. Were, I wasn't even there. You were there. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. No, you didn't join us on that one. So, listeners, if you're interested in Lizzie Borden, uh, go back into our archive and find the episode we did from the Lizzie Borden house. Don't watch the movies though. They're all pretty. They're okay to bad. <sighs> yeah. Unfortunately, they can't make a good one to save their lives. I don't know right. why. I haven't found a good one. Jesus, I don't know why they can't just do the. Sorry. And, and frankly, I haven't found it. a good uh, Elizabeth Bathory movie either. And there's there's been some. I oh, haven't really? seen them. Yeah, there has. I haven't seen oh. uh, all of them. Um, 
so I didn't really write them into the script. No, but, yeah, I didn't know they were for movies. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. More intrigued. Yeah. So uh, I guess without further ado, back in the 17th century, Countess Elizabeth Bathory, more commonly known by her anglicized name, Elizabeth Bathory, was a wealthy and powerful Hungarian noblewoman with deep royal ties in her family. Her father was a count, her uncle, the king of Poland, and her nephew, the prince of Transylvania. It's even rumored that the Bathories were related to Vlad Tepish III of Wallachia, also known as Vlad the Impaler or Dracula. Well, I, yeah, okay. When you say Wallachia, I mean, this sounds really familiar. Where have I heard this? What we do in the shadows. <laughs> oh, there you go. I think they mentioned that shit. They kind of play with those fun it's, facts historical. that aren't facts. Like they use real historical places to put in some fictional vampire history. And I think I heard that somewhere in there. It sounds really familiar. So interesting. Cool. Yeah. Wow, that's some, that's some connections, though. It, it really is. It really is. And there, too, I didn't know she was so deeply tied to royalty. I mean, this woman had immense power. Okay. Uh, immense power. I mean, she she was she didn't have to stand in line for no Beethoven concert tickets. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, definitely she not. Got, she got the they made a Front chair. Row. For her. <laughs> she was able to throw her bra right like, at Beethoven. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they did back then. I don't know how hot of a item he was either. I'm sure he wasn't. <laughs> Mozart, right? Traveling Mozart. Um, now, in 1514 there was a Hungarian peasant revolt against the crown led by Georgi or Georgi Dosa. Okay. Okay. Ultimately the crown stomped out this rebellion and Georgi Dosa was executed by being broiled alive on an iron throne while a searing hot metal crown was placed on his head. <laughs> now, in response to the attempted rebellion or more like a punishment, the Hungarian peasants were reduced to serfs, these agricultural laborers bound by the feudal system to work on their lord's estate. And the Bathory family held a massive estate containing many towns and villages and literally countless serfs. So Elizabeth Bathory came from a very powerful and rich family tree. And in nearly all accounts, Elizabeth Bathory is said to have been beautiful, described as having astonishingly white flesh, almost translucent, translucent, through which one could clearly see the delicate blue veins. She had this long, shimmering silken hair, black as plumage of a raven, it was described. And okay. she had sensual scarlet lips and great dark eyes capable of a doe-like tenderness, but sometimes igniting into savage anger and at other times glazing over with abandoned solemnness of intense sexual passion. Sounds like my kind of woman. Dude, it sounds like, uh, it sounds like too, we you know, uh, too good to be true. It they usually sounds, are, aren't they? It sounds like too good to be true. Like there's something, what's the wrong thing in this? Well. <laughs> well, wait, before, <laughs> I know it's a good leeway, <laughs> but I also like, it sounds fake. And like what I'm saying that I'm not saying that people didn't say that back then. I'm just saying it sounds fake. Yeah. Like they have to be exaggerating something. Although no the translucentness, though, that's 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 fucking white. That's really white. Though. That's really white. Yeah. That's some yeah. white ass shit. Okay, continue. <laughs> so not only was Elizabeth beautiful, she was well poised and smart, having been fluent in mathematics and multiple languages, including Hungarian, Greek, Slovak, Latin, and German. She had it all, Elizabeth did. Beauty, brains, power, wealth, influence. But Elizabeth Bathory had something else, something deep-rooted and broken, something not noticed outwardly until it was too late, something that earned her the rather awesome nickname, the Blood Countess. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Fucking radical, man. <laughs> You see, Elizabeth Bathory was also a sadomasochist femme fatale with a ravenous taste for torture and for blood. Actually, the legends of Elizabeth Bathory's horrific crimes against young women could have been the inspiration behind author Bram Stoker's most famous literary creation, Dracula. 
and that upwards of 650 murders are attributed to her. What? Yes. 650. No. That I... number led the Guinness Book of World Records to label Elizabeth Bathory the most prolific female serial killer in history. And believe what's me. The most, what's the oh. most male one? Oh, I'm not sure. I didn't know uh, there was a guy higher. <laughs> How would... Uh, okay. Uh, what? <laughs> Most I, have to, I have to Google something. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's just astounding, just astounding. And believe me, the stories about Elizabeth Bathory are as varied and wild as the woman was herself. And the stories about her are popular, having spawned books, movies, music, and even toys. For example, there's a Swedish, a Swedish black metal band called Bathory, and the album Cruelty and the Beast by the English black metal band Cradle of Filth, I really like Cradle of Filth, hmm. is a concept album dedicated entirely to Elizabeth Bathory. And there's an awesome song called Elizabeth by the band Ghost, one of my favorite bands, Yeah, which is all about Elizabeth Bathory's thirst for blood. There was even an opera dedicated to her aptly called Ursabit, the opera, written and produced by composer Dennis Bathory Kitts, a man who claims to be one of Elizabeth Bathory's last living relatives. And from what I could tell, this opera only ran three times, on October 28th, 29th, and 30th, 2011, in Vermont. Oh, I wonder if they filmed it. Well, if you're interested in seeing this opera about the Blood Countess, I've left, uh, left a link in the show notes to the entire production on YouTube. Nice. So listeners, if you're excited like Oscar is, make sure and go to the show notes. There's going to be a lot of stuff there this time. Hmm. And believe it or not, there was even an action figure or more like a little mini playset put out by McFarland Toys in 2004 as part of their Six Faces of Madness series, which depicts Elizabeth Bathory bathing in a tub of blood. And it came complete with a candelabra with three women's heads impaled on it. It was awesome. And of course, I own it. Now, again, be sure and check the show notes. I have a picture of this macabre Elizabeth Bathory toy there for you to see. Oh, that's so cool. And Oscar, who could forget Eli Roth's 2007 movie, Hostel Part 2? Yeah. Well, there's an entire excruciating scene dedicated to a oh, woman. Oh, it's the sound. It's, it's the sound that does it, dude. It's everything. The it size is. when it's like crawling through her skin, like a, like not cutting, but like almost. Oh, my God, that sound. It's yeah. so good in that scene. Yeah. And just the whimpering of the victim and the crying. Yeah. And the, it's, That's it's like a, also torture like a porn. Really good actress. They usually plays like dweebs and in, in movies. And shit. Yes. Yes. Ah, and just wait. I name her. I can't remember, but I have it here in my script. Oh, okay, good. So, so in this scene, there's a woman practicing a very Bathory-esque method of torture on an innocent young female victim. In fact, this scene is considered the most brutal kill scene in the entire Hostel franchise. And it was actually cut from foreign, foreign film versions uh, and outright banned in Germany. Now, in the scene, the victim, Lorna, played by Heather Matarazzo, is bound and suspended, buck naked, above a beautiful, equally naked woman lying in a tub, played by Monica Malakova. That's the woman in the tub. The woman in the tub proceeds to use a scythe, like you said, Oscar, to rip apart Lorna's alabaster flesh. It's a painfully long scene. And the whole time, the victim, Lorna, is whimpering and crying and begging for mercy, which, of course, doesn't come. And the scene ends with the bathtub woman slitting Lorna's throat with the scythe as copious amounts of blood rain down onto the woman in the tub. And she ab absolutely relishes in it in ecstasy. Oh, yeah. She is like definitely like orgasming while yeah. this is happening. Yeah, it is. 100%. It is a crazy effective scene, like outside of the context of the rest of the movie. It works by itself, too. Like it just it's just a I mean horror movie fanatic here. So as as a horror movie scene, it really works. As something in reality, that's just fucking horrifying. Yeah. And obviously I would not want that. Okay, obviously. I'm just gonna say that. Um yeah. really effective scene. Yes. Listeners, I don't know. If you haven't seen it, just check out Hostel Part Two for that scene and you'll see what we're talking about. But this is straight bathory lore, is what that was designed after. It's and so interesting to know that 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 oh, what do you call it? Uh 
Mo- um, not montage. What do you call? It? <laughs> homage to, se- oh, homage homage. to yeah, yeah. Bathory. Uh, send up a love letter to Bathory. I didn't realize until I'm realizing now, as you're telling the you're still in the opening of this thing, kind of um, that that might have been that might be Hostel's like biggest historical reference, probably. Oh yeah, they have many. They have many. I've noticed. I've I found some myself. Like I knew of some, like having the director of Cannibal Holocaust as one of the murderers, for example, things like that. I noticed those things, but I didn't realize based on what you said about what this Bathory chick did, mm-hmm. or it's oh, I'm going to find out more about, is that she's probably way more not only prolific but connected and all this stuff. I'm like I didn't know all that, so it might be the the biggest thing, biggest Easter egg probably in that movie. But, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, yeah, could be. I thought it was like a small reference to some woman that lived a long time ago. I didn't know that it was like that crazy. Yeah, no, that entire torture porn sequence sequence where she's bathing in it, drinking in it, or drinking the blood. That's all straight Bathory lore, how she used to bathe in the blood of young female virgins to stay beautiful forever. Yikes. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, the stories of Bathory, incredibly popular, right? Now, before we get into the horrific crimes Elizabeth Bathory was accused of, which, spoiler, she may or may not have committed. Let's take a look at her life before she became the evil blood countess. Get to know her as a person a little bit. Now, again, be sure and check the show notes. I've left a photo of a painting, a photo of a painting from 1585, depicting a 25-year-old Elizabeth Bathory, which is the only known true image of the blood countess ever to exist. And it's there for you to see, um, along with some other Uh, people involved in this story. Hmm. Okay. We know that Elizabeth Bathory was born in Nyabader, Hungary on August 7th, 1560 to George and Anna Bathory, two cousins stemming from two separate powerful familiar lines of Bathory's. So they were cousins. How close of cousins George and Anna were, we're not really sure, but cousins they were. You see, inbreeding was common back then. Yeah done to preserve elite bloodlines. But inbreeding, as we all know today, can have severe consequences too. It dilutes the gene pool, if you will. And from a young age, Elizabeth Bathory showed signs that something wasn't quite right. She was prone to fits of rage and intense temper tantrums. She suffered from seizures. And in some articles I read, it was described that young Elizabeth had a fondness for torturing animals. Oh, Joffrey. Oh, Prince Joffrey, Game of Thrones. Dude, right? You get Joffrey vibes. Very good. I like it. Good analogy. Exactly. Exactly. It's believed that as she grew, Elizabeth also suffered from intense eye and head pain, what today we, we would call migraines, both signals that Elizabeth also likely suffered from some type of epilepsy. And all this begs the question, were Elizabeth's ailments and behavioral issues as a child, which would escalate to the nth degree by adulthood, brought on by too much inbreeding? Was she responsible? Now, according to historian Raymond McNally, this just might be the case, as Elizabeth was not the only one in her family to exhibit, let's just call it strange behavior. Now, according to McNally, this is a quote, The constant intermarriage among the few Hungarian noble families evidently caused caused the blood to run a bit thin. One of Elizabeth's uncles was reputedly addicted to rituals and worshiping in honor of Satan. Her aunt, Clara, enjoyed torturing servants. And Elizabeth's brother, Stefan, was a drunkard and a lecher. Many members of Elizabeth's family complained in their private letters of symptoms which showed signs of evident epilepsy, madness, and other psychological disturbances, end quote. Don't, don't fuck cousins. Just don't do it. Yeah. Or, or I mean, other family members. Just, just stay away. Uh, what's a lecher exactly? I feel like a lecher, it kind of like a bum, just kind of like a, a nerd, a near do well. You know? A near do well. Yeah. yeah. I haven't heard that in a while. Yeah. You so it, Tom Fuller and Ne'er Do Wells, exactly. A drunken Tom Fuller and Ne'er Do Well. Sounds funny. To I can't believe you did it. You pulled it off. Good. Thank you. Now, young Elizabeth was also seen as a tomboy, preferring to dress in boys' clothes and play games usually reserved to boys, like swordplay. And she was into horsemanship, 
and she demanded that she be treated as well as the boys and men were treated. Hmm. Now, of course, there's absolutely nothing wrong with being a tomboy or demanding to be treated equally. That's cool. But for the time, it was highly uncommon for girls to behave this way. Very Arya vibes. Sorry. Very no. Arya vibes. Oh, yeah, exactly. I don't know what I'm doing here. What You're am I doing? Game of Thrones role, dude. I haven't seen that show since the left. But these are just you know more signs that something was off with Elizabeth. Okay. Personal ailments aside, we also have to keep in mind the political climate at the time. Elizabeth grew up in a place and time where violence and cruelty were commonplace public executions and the like. During my research, I kept coming across a story that talked about and put emphasis on a gruesome execution Elizabeth witnessed while she was a young girl. The story goes she watched transfixed as a man, a gypsy, who had been charged with selling his child to the Turks or for theft. The stories differ on what this man did. He was sewn up into the belly of a dead horse while he was still alive. And Elizabeth laughed and giggled as the man's head poked out of the horse's belly for the last time before it was sewn up in there for good in this rotting, stinking tomb. Now, dude, could you imagine dying that way? I don't. And, how do you die? I guess starvation. So starvation, That's... suffocation could be heat as well. Oh, but imagine, oh, yeah, no. Yeah, no. And, and the how stinking. Long, uh, how long is the horse dead when they start throwing it out? Are there maggots? No, fuck that you noise. No, think of it. If fuck not, there will noise. be soon. Fuck that noise. <laughs> Dude, that's but, how you create some Cronenberg monsters, though. Right? Yeah, yeah, That yeah. sounds like a, a recipe for disaster in many other ways. I think I've seen that in The Thing, actually. I'm pretty sure I did, too. <laughs> but imagine dying that way, and can you imagine how creepy it was to see this little girl giggling at that? Oh, no, Ugh. it's fucking... T- I, the giggling, when you said that, that, that made it a really yeah. horrifying picture there. Eesh. Now, not only were public executions common, but a war with the Turks raged and there was both political and religious upheavals taking place, mainly between the Roman Catholics and the Protestants. You see the Elizabeth Bathory's family, they were starch staunch Protestants. There there were these Protestant holdouts in an increasingly Roman Catholic world Hmm. in which Protestants and Catholics were engaged in political and even military struggles against each other. Not good for the Bathory's, okay, being these Protestant holdouts. Yeah. We also know at age 11, Elizabeth Bathory was engaged to 16-year-old Count Fern- <laughs> Ferenc Natasdi. Ferenc oh. Natasdi. Gesundheit. I don't know if you said that right. <laughs> no, it, yeah, I think I did that right. Nice. F-E-R-E-N-C. Ferenc. Ferenc. And then it's, it's I mean, it's, it's, a weird, it's a different language, probably Ferenc. I mean, oh, no, I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying that's how much we don't know. <laughs> yeah, right. There you go. There you go. Now, back then, again, it was, it was common to arrange marriages among young nobility in effort to strike deals, solidify power, and join powerful families together. And Frank's family was another very wealthy and very powerful family in Hungary, mm-hmm. just as rich and powerful as the Bathory's, although the Bathory family was older and held more influence. These are big deals back then. Yeah. Now, after their marriage in 1575, Elizabeth moved to Savar Castle, the seat of family Natasdy's power. Now, if all the stories are true, which, again, the stories about Elizabeth, Elizabeth Bathory are so varied, but if the stories are true, this marriage would ultimately seal Elizabeth's fate. As according to legend, Ferenc, Elizabeth's husband, was definitely an, an enabler. He helped to fuel and hone whatever bloodlust already existed in young Elizabeth. What? Yeah. Okay. So you see, Ferenc would go on to become a strong, successful, feared Hungarian army leader, known as the Black Knight of Hungary. How cool is that? Mm. And he fought against the Ottoman Empire, which was plaguing Central Europe at the time. And Ferenc was brutal to his enemies. He would torture those he conquered and dance with their dead bodies. It said he was he would impale people, a practice he learned from his Ottoman enemies. And there are stories that say that Ferenc would toss around and play kind of like a form of football with his enemies' severed heads. Ah, good old fun times Ferenc. I bet he would have been great at parties. 
Now, because of Ferenc's active military career, he would be gone from home for long bouts, only returning to visit his wife during lapses in war. During Ferenc's absences, Elizabeth had the responsibility of maintaining their castle and all their lands. It's during this time of loneliness and heavy responsibility that Elizabeth mothered a love child with a castle, a castle servant named Laszlo. No one sure what happened to this child, but when Ferenc found out about it, about Elizabeth and Laszlo, he had Laszlo castrated and immediately thrown to a pack of wild dogs to be devoured, literally ate and alive. Yikes, yikes. These are fucked up people, okay? I mean, yeah, back then, they, they really talk about that earlier, that uh, President's Revolution, what they did to that guy. Like, Right, the, the they, Iron they don't Throne. Fuck, they don't fuck around. We did a, an episode on old tortures and shit. Like, Yes. We got it easy, guys. <laughs> Easier anyway. Yeah. Oh, my God, that's so awful. Yeah. yeah, put someone in prison for 40 years or have him sit on a molten hot iron throne with an iron crown put on his head. Jesus Christ. Why? Who thinks of that? I know. Why would you think of that? Why would you act on that? <laughs> so many whys. But it's just so it, it also just adds to the story of Elizabeth. that This is what she grew up witnessing. You know, mm-hmm. this, these were yeah, the times. G- giggling, too. Yeah. Now, after this pregnancy with castrated, devoured Laszlo, Elizabeth was spirited away to another Nadesti castle called Chaktitse. Nice. Yeah, Chaktitse Castle. And again, in approximately 1577, Elizabeth gave birth to another child, a daughter named Anastasia. It's really unclear if Ferenc, the husband, was Anastasia's father, or if she was born from another affair. It's mm-hmm. likely the latter. Either way, the baby was kept secret. And Frank made sure the child was completely unassociated with the family. There are no existing records of Anastasia, which leads many to believe that Frank had the baby killed. Huh. Now, Elizabeth wouldn't give birth again until 1585, and she ultimately mothered five children with Frank. We know the children were named Anna Natasde, who lived until the age of 38, or Sloya Natasde. We're not sure when she died. Caitlin Natasde, believed to have lived until the age 26, and there was Andras Natasde, who lived until he was about seven years old. And there was also one named Paul, or Paul uh, Natasde, who became a military hero and died around the age 36. Mm. Not, not long lifespans uh, in these Well, ages. also back then, 38, it's like, that was uh, 64 back then. <laughs> right. Still young. Yeah. I mean, we could live up to 80 nowadays, so he should have lived a little longer. They should have. Yeah, but still, that's not exactly young either, I guess, for that time. Damn, that's um, a lot of babies. A lot of babies, but also that's something you hear a lot about the old days, right? A lot of babies around, even though if a lot of them didn't make it out, a lot of people had a lot of babies. They really tried. Yeah, they tried. Yeah, they did. And speaking of a lot, there there are rumors about two more children that Elizabeth mothered, hmm. Miklos and Georgi or Georgi. And possibly both died at birth. No records exist about these two children. And they were never named in, in Elizabeth Bathory's will. So we're not really sure. But there are stories that she had two additional ones. Mm-hmm. They're basically lost to time. Yeah. All of the surviving children that I named were raised by a governess, as was customary for the time. And from what I could tell, they all led fairly normal lives. Okay. <laughs> okay. Their, their mother and father, however, were anything but normal. Okay. At Savar Castle, while her husband was off fighting the Ottomans, it said that Elizabeth began to torture her young servants, although Elizabeth might have referred to it as just disciplining. And the torture would really ramp up when Elizabeth and Ferenc moved to Chaktitse Castle, the place where Elizabeth would be imprisoned and ultimately die. Hmm. Elizabeth would beat her servants with a cudgel, like a, a... yeah, those kind of are... like a bat. Almost. Yeah, yeah, it's like, it's like a, with, a with medieval a, bat. Yeah, a medieval bat, exactly. Yeah. She would stick needles into various parts of their anatomies, burn their genitals, and she would throw young women into the snow and then douse them with water until they fucking froze to death. Just brutal. It's said that Elizabeth would be egged on by letters Frank would send home from the war, from the war front, describing in great deal, great detail, various forms of torture he would employ on the battlefield. And in turn, he would suggest that Elizabeth try these torture methods back home 
on her female staff. Oh my God. This is like a twisted fucked up version of Abelard and Eloise. <laughs> <laughs> not good. It's said not long lost loves through love letters. It was like, Hey wife, here's a few pointers. Right. To- I mean, who does these things? <laughs> Fun times know. for rank. Uh, hey wife. That's all I got. Really? That's pretty bad. Now when, when Frank did come home uh, and visit his wife again, when periods of war lulled, Together, they would practice these methods of torture on their female maidservants. Now, some couples bond over a bottle of wine or by oh God. sitting and watching their favorite Netflix show together. Netflix and chill. <laughs> yeah, Elizabeth and Fun Times Frank, they were a little different, I guess. They, they it's, bonded uh, over. It's, uh, it's torture and leisure. <laughs> there you go. Sorry. I was trying to think of a good way. It's hard to, to come over that one. Yeah, they, they bonded over torture and sadomasochism to each mm. their own. Am I right? Now, while living at Chaktitse Castle, Elizabeth hooked up with some accomplices who would apparently assist the blood countess in her depravities, especially after Frank's death in 1604. There was Anna Darvolia, known as Darvulia. Now, Darvulia hooked up with Elizabeth around 1601, just a few years before her husband Frank died. Okay. Deruvia, Deruvia, oh God, Darvulia. <laughs> it's all right. I can't do these names, Oscar. Darvulia was described as a witch and possibly Elizabeth's lesbian, lesbian lover. And according to court testimony, Elizabeth Bathory's lust for blood really ramped up after Darvulia arrived. Darvulia may have even further trained Elizabeth in the arts of torture and murder. Like how to make it last and shit? The fuck? Yeah. Now, good luck trying to find any historical information on this mysterious witch, Darvulia. It just doesn't Mm. exist. I tried. Man. Another accomplice was named Mm. Lana Joy Nagy, an an elderly woman and Elizabeth's children's wet nurse. There was Lana Joy Nagy's elderly friend, a woman named Dratoya Zentes, Mm. and an elderly washerwoman, Named Caitlin Benexky. Washerwoman, huh? Yeah. And oddly, there was a boy in the mix named Janice Ujvari, simply known as Fixco. Fixco, okay. Yes. Who, according to what I've read, may have been simple minded and deformed in some way. Oh, okay. Now, these friends, we'll call them special friends, became Elizabeth's assassins of sorts carrying out torture on female servants when Elizabeth herself was too tired or too sick to do it herself. And they would help collect peasant women from the town Elizabeth ruled over and lure them back to the castle under the false pretense of well-paid work. During this time, according to legend, Elizabeth and her cohorts cohorts would beat women to death, leaving them nothing but indistinguishable lumps of flesh, blood, and bone on the castle floors. Needles would be stuck under servant girls' fingernails before the fingers themselves were completely ripped off. Paper doused in oil would be stuffed between girls' toes and between their thighs and lit on fire. Red-hot pokers would just be jammed into women's mouths. One servant was said to have been doused in honey and then tied to a tree near the castle, left to have her body devoured by insects and forest animals. Several victims were forced to eat their own flesh or the flesh of other female maidservants. Elizabeth Bathory herself was said to bite and rip and eat the flesh from her victims' faces and their breasts whenever she was in a particularly ill mood or when she was just too sick to perform acts of torture that required physical exertion. I I read an account that that described a device like an iron cage with spikes pointing inward in which young girls would be in prison and hung above Elizabeth. Her accomplices would then poke and prod and burn the young victims inside, causing the victim to writhe in fear and pain, which in turn would cause severe skin lacerations from the spikes. That's how sharp they were, that just like jab, you know, quickly swiping the next, yeah, wow. Yeah, and then blood would rain down freely onto Elizabeth Bathory. I mean, this this is the scene from the movie Hostel 2 right here, right? I mean, this is a scene from a lot of horror movies I've seen. Yeah. How much insp- – I mean, we – I guess – yeah, we're not as fucked up as we think. Yeah, we not, we never are. I mean, history is full of this shit. Wow. We really have never thought of anything before 
This woman thought of a lot. Yeah. Yeah, she did. I'm getting major Resident Evil Village vibes too, by the way. <clears throat> oh, really? I'm not too familiar with the movie, so. Yeah, like Lady Demetris, Demetris, whatever. Pretty fucked up house, castle, let me just say. I wonder if it, it could be inspired by this. I think this a little bit. Has Chuck Tietze castle. Yeah. Now, we're not, we're not done with the women hanging in the cage now. The, the blood that would drip and rain down would then be collected and placed into another tub in which Elizabeth Bathory would bathe like a ritual at four o'clock in the morning. This happened, unfortunately, on a regular basis. Yeah. Now, for some reason, out of all the methods of torture I've, met, I've met, mentioned so far, this one bothered me the most. It was said that Elizabeth would jam her hands into a servant girl's mouth and then rip the girl's mouth wide open. Fucking hell, man. That, that yeah. just gives me the skeeves. No, yeah, because it, yeah, I mean, well, not because of anything. It's yeah, it's fucked up, but like I think um, there's something weirdly, um, like astoundingly carnally vis like visceral about that that motion. The idea that your jaw opens now normally, but it can open a lot more unnaturally. Yeah, you know, I think there's something in there that makes it extra skeevier. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Mm. And, and really on and on the torture and killings went unabated. After all, these were just peasant girls and no peasant family could bring charges against nobility charges that would stick or be taken seriously anyway. Now, at first, as I said, Elizabeth Bathory's victims were these impoverished young women from the countryside from the poor serf families. But in fact, complaints were brought to the King by peasants and minor church officials but because it was a Bathory being charged, the complaints went nowhere. The Bathory name was too powerful, too influential, too well-connected, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Nevertheless, though, rumors began to circulate that something terribly sinister was happening at Chiktitze Castle. But because the victims were poor, really, Elizabeth Bathory could have gone on forever, murdering at whim, torturing servant girls, girls and bathing in their blood. However, Elizabeth's witchy friend, that Darvulia, convinced the blood countess that aristocratic blood, blue blood, was needed, that upper-class blood was the only way Elizabeth could stay young and beautiful. So Elizabeth Bathory did with any, what any normal bloodthirsty young youth-seeking murderess would do. She opened up a school of sorts at Chiktitze Castle, a school of refinement, to which aristocrats could send their daughters to learn how to be women of class. God. And so Elizabeth Bathory began murdering women of wealthy, connected families. I mean, the balls on this woman. Did she really think no one would notice or care when this class of young women went missing? This is where, this is where it's proof that it's insanity, not intelligence. She's not like at all. I mean, I'm not saying she wasn't smart about anything in life, but she was clearly more insane than, than smart. Yeah. I, I, That's I what this I means. hundred you know percent. I'm saying like when you can't control it, you think that this is the right solution. You know, that's, that's like, that's a fool's errand. That's a fool. hundred percent. It's a fool, a fool enabling herself to, to do whatever she wants. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But unfortunately, not, not, not unfortunately, fortunately, that's exactly what happened. And Elizabeth Bathory's days of running amok, murdering and torturing at whim would quickly come to an end because she started killing upper class girls. In the year 1610, King Matthias II of Hungary, brother of Holy Roman Emperor, uh, both Catholics, by the way, uh, had heard enough of complaining from aristocrats about their daughters disappearing while attending Bathory's refinement school. King Matthias ordered an inquiry into the severe allegations being levied against Elizabeth. Placed at the head of the investigation was a man named Grigori, or George, Thurzo, a Hungarian feudal lord. Now, this Thurzo, this, this George Thurzo, he's interesting. George Thurzo, Thurzo and Elizabeth's husband, Ferenc Natasde, were at one time really close. In hmm. fact, right before Ferenc's death, he entrusted his soon-to-be widow, Elizabeth, and his heirs, kids, to George Thurzo. It's also important to note that while Ferenc was alive, he borrowed tons of money to the crown, 
if the crown was in trouble financially, Ferenc would be there to bail them out. You're and kidding. No. Now, up until the time Elizabeth Bathory was being investigated, the money lent to the crown had not been paid back to the Bathory's. Keep in mind, even though Elizabeth Bathory was as crazy as a shithouse rat, she was still awfully rich at the time of her investigation. She owned at least four castles and tons of land. If -hmm. something were to happen to Elizabeth, like, say, being found guilty of horrendous crimes and sentenced to prison or death, the crown's debt would be cleared and all of Elizabeth's assets would be forfeited to the crown. Now, here's where the conspiracy comes in. You don't say. (laughs) Was Elizabeth Bathory really a mad blood countess guilty guilty of murdering 650 people, or was she the victim of a plot to get rid of a powerful female Protestant who the crown was indebted to and who had lots of money and lots of land? Were the charges against Elizabeth Bathory actually bogus? We'll probably never know for sure, but it's definitely an interesting thought. Anyway, we left off with George Thurzo. During his investigation, Thurzo is said to have interviewed some 289 witnesses against Bathory, of which more than 250 of those witnesses offered up either pure rumors or no information at all. As for Elizabeth's cohort, her cohorts, her partners in crime, by the time the trial against Elizabeth was taking place in 1611, Darvulia, the witch, was already dead. She died before trial, uh, apparently natural causes. Hmm. Elizabeth claimed that the murders were all the servants doing, that she was essentially a prisoner to them and that she was terrified of them. The servants testified against Elizabeth, but it said that they only confessed to Elizabeth's crimes while under torture. Is that kind of confession even admissible? Well, back then it might have been. <laughs> back then, yeah. Or back in then, like it, 1980 it, Chicago. <laughs> It's yeah. true. It's oh, true. That's true. Yeah, that's 70s true. and 80s, yeah. Phone book. <laughs> Phone book, right. <laughs> then there was a testament testimony of a woman only known as Bathory maidservant Susanna. Now, Susanna claimed to have knowledge of a ledger written in Elizabeth Bathory's own handwriting that contained the names of all of, of Elizabeth's 650 victims. What? Now, interestingly, too, this ledger was never produced at trial, yet the victim count of 650 stuck. No proof. No proof. Just Uh, hearsay, right? Okay. Keep in mind, during all the hundreds of interviews leading up to the trial and during witness testimony at trial, including her accomplices' confessions under torture, not once was it ever mentioned that Elizabeth Bathory bathed in blood. Not once. So it seems that the most horrific prevalent rumor about Elizabeth Bathory, that she bathed in her victim's blood to remain young, is totally false. Mm -hmm. Sorry, listeners. Now, ultimately, three of Elizabeth's accomplices were found guilty and and condemned to death. Lana Jo Nagy, Dratoya Zentes, and the boy, Fixo. Fixco. Nagy and Zentes had their fingers ripped off with hot pinchers, and they were burned at the stake. Nice. Now, Fitzko was handled a little more tenderly because due to his young age, he was seen as less culpable. Fixo was beheaded, and then his body burned instead of being tortured, then killed. Right. No, I mean, that's fucking, that's uh, what it's the... um, Quick, quick. Sleeping in your sleep or something. (laughs) (laughs) Dying in your sleep, I mean. (laughs) Yeah. That's all the difference there. Now, Caitlin Benetsky, the other another accomplice, was sentenced to life in prison imprisonment. Benetsky got off easier uh, than the others because during trial it was revealed that she was bullied and dominated by the others. So she got off just with life imprisonment. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Still though. Which of course leaves Elizabeth Bathory. What happened to Elizabeth Bathory? Uh-huh. Now, believe it or not, Elizabeth was not convicted of a single crime. She was never even put on trial, didn't even attend the hearings. She wasn't sent to prison, and she wasn't executed. Instead, she was isolated at Chiktitze Castle. George Thurzo managed to get Elizabeth basically house arrest. Whether it was to preserve the powerful Bathory name 
or maybe to uphold a promise to look after Ferenc's widow, a dying man's wish. Or because or, she's rich. Or, right, for some other political agenda. Mm-hmm. Thorzo managed to keep Elizabeth uh, avoided, uh, helped her avoid a very public humiliating trial and escape death. And because she was never convicted of a crime, all of Elizabeth's assets went to her family instead of the crown. So kind of a nice ending there. The normal family. It went uh, to the normal her you know, family, yes, correct. Like her kids, right? The normal kids. Yes. <laughs> and luckily got sent to other people to raise for them because that was normal for some reason. Yeah, right. I don't know how that's normal, but whatever people did weird stuff back then. If, um, if they had money, yeah, for sure. I guess yeah, so, she, yeah. She essentially got off completely, kept her money uh, to be white, wealthy, and powerful. Yeah. Now, as I wonder, for Liz- I wonder what the medieval version of an ankle bracelet is, uh, one of those ankle monitors. <laughs> Fucking boulder. <laughs> <laughs> a, 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 an a, anvil that screeches when you leave the castle. <laughs> Is that a bat on your ankle, Bathory? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, now, as for Elizabeth's house, house arrest, some say she was actually walled up inside the castle, bricked up in her own personal prison with only small air holes so she could breathe and a small door through which food could be passed. Hmm. And there she sat imprisoned in her own castle for three or four years until her death on August 24th, 21st, August 21st, 1614. And we're not really sure how Elizabeth died. All we know is that the night before she died, Elizabeth complained to a bodyguard that her hands were cold, to which the bodyguard replied, it's nothing, mistress, just go lie down. Attempt at a accent was that a hungarian accent because i have no idea what hungarian sound like <laughs> yes and that's exactly what they sound like okay that, that's all we have it, he just told her it's nothing go lie down the next morning Bathory was dead elizabeth was buried at uh, church of chiquitze remember chiquitze is an actual town for which the castle is named yeah yeah yeah. you need some, yeah now when vis- villagers heard that the blood countess was buried in their cemetery they went nuts so Elizabeth's body was disinterred and reburied in the Bathley family crypt in Exceed, Hungary. Apparently, there are stories that say later on in history, when the Bathory crypt was opened, Elizabeth's body was nowhere to be found. So no one's really exactly sure where she is today. What? Yeah. Maybe she's a vampire walking around. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, got desecrated, got moved from some other crazy person that heard all the stories. You know, it could be... A lot of things, or some religious God knows what, you know, uncursed it by taking it and putting it somewhere else. I don't know. It could be a lot of things. In hollow ground somewhere. Yeah, I I have no idea. Right. But it's just more intrigue to the story. Where is Elizabeth actually buried? Right. Now, as for Chiquitze Chiquitze Castle, it's, it's still somewhat standing in what is now Slovakia. It's a ruined castle, but it's open for tourism. You could actually walk through the castle ruins and pace the very same steps Elizabeth Bathory paced, like her living quarters, the likely place where she was walled up before she eventually died. And yes, the castle is rumored to be haunted. Everything from shadow figures, full-bodied apparitions, disembodied voices, to ghosts of crying young girls are all said to haunt the ruins of Chiquitze Castle. There are even stories about the blood countess herself haunting the ruins, sometimes described as being faceless. Imagine encountering a faceless Elizabeth Bathory while on a tour there. That'd be awesome. And speaking of encountering Elizabeth Bathory, in Chiquitze's town square, there's a huge wooden sculpture of Elizabeth Bathory, complete with a miserable-looking young girl wrapped up in Elizabeth's flowing dress. It's a super creepy cult sculpture and it caused a lot of controversy when it was erected i mean it's like it's like putting up a statue of jeffrey dahmer in the middle of downtown milwaukee wisconsin you just don't do it yeah but a hundred or two hundred years from now doing it would mean it's less impactful because no one would remotely related to that well and that's that was kind of the argument for this statue it's like it's so far removed you know right it's like you know like we can say something positive about genghis khan now but we couldn't the year or the decade he fucking ruled over half the world or whatever, you know, that was like in bad form to say anything positive about the guy. 
But, you know, wait a couple hundred years. Yeah, you can start saying like, yeah. oh, you know, you did a lot good for the world, really. You know. Yeah. And from the articles I read, you know, people are torn about it. People are, are grateful that the story of Elizabeth Bathory, whether true or false, brings tourism and therefore money, right? Exposure. I want to go because of that. Me yes, too. I want to go. I want to visit that castle for sure. Yes. Uh, and of course, in the show notes, I've left I've a left, uh, picture of that creepy, creepy statue. Statue. Yes. Yeah. So that's that's the blood countess so what do you think putting so, it on you bitch there there's a lot more court testimony that i didn't include in this in this script how apparently according to the record um some of the officials that were on the case or hearing the case actually got to uh, examine some bodies that were found around the castle and they did show signs of torture Hmm. Uh, so I, I know the crimes happened. Is it 650? I don't really think so. Um, and then was it Elizabeth? Was it her assistance? Was it a combination? Hmm. I don't know. Was she really this raving mad lunatic? I don't think so. Um, not after everything I've read. I don't think she was. Um, Is it, it the, 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 the fact that um, the whole bathing and blood thing being a false thing dissuade you from thinking that? Yeah, kind of. Yes. Well, it's because that's the one image we always get with her right absolutely right so i think what you maybe it's a lot harder to believe any other crazy things she might have done they're just so extreme i mean i know we've done this in history and it's documented it's fact Mm -hmm. but one person doing all this uh well here's the thing here's my over a relatively short time oh you you know how busy you gotta be cranking out 650 murders you'll never sleep well well, you know, you told earlier when you were describing her, her like upbringing, how she l- knows all these languages. Think about that. Who has the time to learn that many languages? <laughs> no, really. Not me. That's you, for sure. Not, not I said the cat. And I don't know where to, the stuff like that. It drives me nuts. I'm like, how do people have time to do? Don't they have? I mean, I know they don't have jobs, but she had an estates to run. And all, like, <sighs> People can be industrial. That's my point. They can do. They can get up to some shit. There's time in the day, Jay, to do a lot yeah. of things. Yeah. We, it just doesn't yeah. seem like it for you and I, who clearly either are, you know, have, you know, different responsibilities, or like me, maybe, cannot manage your time better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm horrible at time management. I'm pretty bad at it. I could not pull this off. <laughs> right. So I think it to us it seems impossible. To, you know, someone like her, maybe not so much. Yeah. And I also find it so fascinating that there's a conspiracy here with the crown. And, you know, there is a reason people would want her gone and convicted of something heinous to where she's prison uh, or death, dead, executed. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, man. Well, that, the kind that of really points, muddy, it muddies the waters. Do you believe she killed people? How about that? I think so. I think I do. Uh, serial killer numbers you think i'm not saying 650 but do you think it's more traditional serial killer like 50 do you think she's killed 50 people 50 peasants or whatever she she certainly could have they're according to these I mean, records, it's a high fucking number but back then you know maybe not so much if she's uh holed up in her own world i.e the rich white world of being rich and white um you know maybe to her it doesn't seem like that big a number right uh okay here's my, my kind of points is that if we believe, and I do, that she is a, um, a negative byproduct of genealogy, upbringing, and, you know, bad blood in her and stuff, that she's so white, so translucent, it's the bathing in blood kind of goes with that a little bit. Although the idea of seeing a very, 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 very white and pale woman um, as a ghost in the castle today <laughs> seems like, well, just be seeing her? <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, any any more translucent, and I can't see her at all. So I don't, you know, be yeah. funny. That's just a funny thought I had earlier. Um, so uh, you know, it makes me wonder about like, um, like, because it, it only takes once to bathe in blood to fucking get a reputation for it, you know. But oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If the if the if the if the rumor mill strikes just at the right time, but you're right though. No, no way I believe everything either. No way I believe everything either. Yeah. But um, 650 also, it seems fucking high. 
fucking high. She's, I mean, she's got, that's a large number. And, um, but even if it's half that, that's still very, very large. Yeah. But it, all it takes is one perfect storm of shit and bad choices or evil or whatever you want to call it for, for history in history for, uh, for this kind of person to happen. It takes once. It has to have happened at some point. This could be the one point. Yeah, it, it and it, you're right. I like that perfect storm of shit analogy. You have the inbreeding, law, right? <laughs> yeah, you, right. you have the inbreeding. Yeah, you have emotional issues as a child. You have an incredibly historically violent husband who enables yeah. enables like fucking like nobody's business. You're isolated. It sounded and super like rich. And super rich, yeah, in charge of countless people uh, on, mm-hmm. on the lands. You, your partner is this Dravulia or Dravulia uh, witch. Uh, yeah, which sounds like her Rasputin, by the way. We know nothing about Rasputin. It comes out of nowhere. It's some, supposedly it's some magical doctor person. You know, yeah. some similar. Not, not exactly one-to-one. I'm just saying. A little similar. It, yeah, in the articles, there's definitely a mystical element to this woman. So... Mm-hmm. You know, she's surrounded by all this insanity. Mm-hmm. How could you stay sane? Yeah, I, I do think she killed people. I'm I'm with you. I don't think it's 650. But then again, if six people are working at, at building that number, the the associates and Elizabeth, right? right. Maybe it's possible. And um, you really have a license with impunity to kill and do whatever you want. Because yes. as long as it's not rich people, right, others like you, then you're fine. Nobody cares. Nobody had records back. No, and obviously, so many things that we didn't have. Um, nobody, but a lot of people didn't know how to read. Shit people, like that, you know. People did care, but the right, serfs, but no one could do anything. Yeah, the serfs, the the, the way, the way uh, hierarchy went. Uh, that yeah. level of person couldn't of course, levy charges I mean. against, yeah, no. right? Oh yeah, of course. That's what I meant. I'm not saying nobody, nobody. Yeah. I'm saying nobody that could do anything about it cared. Yeah, that's what I meant. I guess. Um, that's very sad, and there's a lot of examples of that in history, I and mean, we're still having that today, just hopefully less, less of it. Um, there was another point I was going to make uh, regarding this. Oh, yeah, is that um, maybe maybe, maybe it's harder to believe, and I myself may say, I don't think I believe all of the crazy shit she did to torture, like creatively be tortured with the whole cage with the spikes thing, all that stuff. Maybe I wouldn't go that far, but I can definitely see something like her experimenting and like being almost like a, the way a, a child or a boy will pull the wings off a fly mm. or pull the, 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 the legs off a spider kind of curiosity, viciousness where like, I can see her like putting someone in the snow and dumping cold water on them. For example, I can see that hundred percent. You know who you this know? reminds me of? Who? Madame Lulori from new Orleans, the Lulori oh. mansion. I'm going to need a reminder. Um, Kathy Bates' character in American Horror Story Coven. Coven. I don't remember Coven. I haven't seen uh, that. All right. Well, we'll we talked about Lilori a few times, I think, on the show in a couple different episodes. Maybe one day we'll do an episode on her. But she was a very rich woman in the French Quarter who did nothing but torture and experiment on slaves. Oh, wow. Um, horrible, yeah. horrible story. Yeah. But yeah, that's definitely. what I kept thinking of. A slightly more modern version Uh yeah, right. Slightly. Elizabeth Bathory there in, in the Lori. Yeah. Interesting. But, uh, going interesting. back to the conspiracy. No, very interesting. Going back to the conspiracy angle, I really like that too because, um, I mean, religion just meant a lot more. I mean, it, it, it was uh, – you don't start a war without knowing that kind of information. That came along with your date of birth, right? Mm. Nowadays, nobody – not nobody cares, but not important. It's not, it's, you can't get a – you can't not get a job if you're religious, you know? Right. Um, for example, back then, you couldn't without without the right one yeah and there were these protestant holdouts in in that increasingly catholic roman catholic world Mm -hmm. that could spell danger i'm surprised it didn't run with uh with the spaniards or some of the spaniards um and uh what are the other protestants i forget pilgrims i'm surprised they didn't go to the new land and stuff to the new world isn't that the why they went because they were being persecuted as protestants and shit some of them anyway no is that a thing? You don't know American history? Of Sorry. course. Well, I don't know. Isn't that what happened? I'm asking you. <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah, so the, pil- the pilgrims were escaping uh, persecution. Yeah, religious yeah, persecution. Right. Yeah, that was like them. We've I mean, been. We've been to Plymouth Rock. Joe Erie may or may not have stood on Plymouth Rock. 
isn't he not supposed to do that? Right. So that's he may or may not have. I don't yeah. know. Let's go. Let's go. Be butthurt about a rock, guys. It's just a rock. <laughs> um, no, I'm saying I'm surprised they didn't run off to the New World. I'm not saying to America exactly. Let's go more south. Uh, anyway, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. I like. I like the. I like the idea. Maybe it's more of a like, um, like a golden opportunity. You know, uh, uh, presented itself to the king. I forget who it was. Right. That's on that, that the whole thing. But like With the Catholic eyes. version. Uh, maybe a, a golden opportunity came up with her and her school. Whether or not she killed people there, it only takes one, really. But uh, whatever happened, it opportun- you know, there, it came up and uh, was a way to stifle her. So it does seem a little political, more motivated. But I also believe she definitely killed people, and she deserved a lot, a lot, lot worse than just hey, yeah, stay, whatever stay here. she got, yeah. whatever she got, she deserved a lot fucking worse. Yeah, and it's really not even clear how horrible that that house arrest was. You know, was she really walled up, or did she have free reign in the castle? She was just urged not to leave. I, I can't imagine that she was walled up. It's hard for me to imagine that. Yeah, I'd have yeah. to see the proof in the in the castle or something, and then date carbon date that fucking brick or whatever. <laughs> I need to. I don't. I just don't believe it. I find that hard to believe. But even so, you and your castle, you're fine. You should deserve yeah. the hours. <laughs> Yeah, apparently she still had bodyguards, right? Because that was slap the last, on the wrist. It's a slap on the wrist. That was the last person she talked to was a bodyguard. So not not uh, a jailer. I really love her inspiration though. I want to check out the bands fucking talking about. I want to check out this opera though. I want to check out um because there's like a because we're way past that point, right? This is, that was sixteen hundred and something. Like I mean, I can see why there's a lot of great inspiration out there. I, I want to kind of join in on that and just check out what people have done. You yeah. Know? Go for I want to see the books and shit. Yeah, I want to see that. Yeah, so, check yeah, out. It's the, a lot. It's a great story. I didn't know nothing about that. I just knew the fucking you know bathtub time. <laughs> bathtub time. <laughs> Bath time. That's all I knew about. Well, good. I'm glad I, I turned you on to something new and interesting. Hopefully, I did it cool. for the listeners as well. Hella cool. Too bad there's not more information for such a large number of potentially killed. It's a large yeah. number. Damn. I mean, I managed to pull off. Oh, last year for 12 murders. <laughs> right. I was yeah, more information. I had more information. So yeah. Records were shaky at best, you mm-hmm. know, yeah, so much rumor and hearsay. And yeah, it's crazy. You know, every time I come across stories, this is unrelated. Oh, it's a little related. Uh every time I come across stories like this, I always wish uh I was in the um not always, just recently, have been um what do you call it? daydreaming, fantasizing about uh, devs, the show. Oh, I remember devs. Yeah, uh, the show, uh, the show on FX. Devs. I wish I had the devs machine so I can look back in time, right, and see the truth of the shit for real. Like I want to see her not bathe in that blood or bathe in it. I want to, you know, just like know for sure. Like, how do they not use that for that information all the time in that show? I would be doing that all the fucking time. Who killed JFK immediately day one? Day yeah. three is Bathory, you know, like, but get there, you know. I'd be Suppo- supposedly that technology <clears throat> exists. It's called the Chronovisor. Chronovisor. And supposedly the Vatican holds it, but that's for another day. Are you sure? What the fuck are you doing? Are you fucking? No, nope, um, it's for another why day. Are you, why are you teasing me? It's Oscar <laughs> Spectre. Okay, it's Oscar. It's Oscar. I gave away a little tidbit of a possible future episode. I guess you did, you fuck. Um, but anyway, that's all I got. Me too. Yeah. What do you say? You're going to take us home? Yes. Let us do that so I can watch some horror movies. Love Dump. Oscar, take us home.
Oh, yeah. Uh, I was going to say, I have a couple things to show you. Mm. One is, like, well, one like is. to see things. One is just for you. I might be drinking this. Oh, nice. So, God, I miss that. FYI, and you there. I haven't had alcohol in kind of like a couple weeks now. Oh. Except for whenever. I think that time was at your place. Oh, wow. Yeah. And before that was also at your place. <laughs> Honestly. Um, uh, so Noticing there's a pattern here, Oscar. A little bit, right? <laughs> and guess what this is? Oh, they came in? Yes, they did. Ah, <laughs> I dropped, it, dropped them all. What was the first one? Love Dump or something? It is. You want to see the cover? It's I insane. so it's do want to see this. fucking crazy cover. <laughs> Jesus, you ready? Yeah. What the fuck? <gasps> Holy shit. And the back? Oh my god, dude! Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> You're so excited! Holy shit, dude! You want to? What do we read to this? What do we read to you? What's in this? What this box has to be? I think this has to be either in the show or an outtake or something. I'll put it in the outtake. I th- are um, you sure this could be your your part of the show? Like the what's well, okay. new? Yeah, this, well, I'm. I have a feeling this is going to be really good. <laughs> Or really bad, but could oh, be really bad. bad. I have no idea. I haven't seen it yet, so I don't. Um, so don't. I haven't seen it. Um, mm-hmm. here's here's what it says in the back. Here's the plot description. <laughs> That's heavy shit, dude. You want to see the second one? I do. Uh, this one got on a lark, and it looks like I'm. I may have. I wouldn't have gotten it if I'd known, but we'll see. Sadistic pleasures. Oh no, that and looks then, like snuff, dude. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, it looks some. It looks weird for sure. I don't think I would have gotten this one. It looks more like a like a psychosexual type of release. My, my, I think I got like some porn that I will never be into by accident. <laughs> I don't know yet. I'm and that find says out. that says a lot. Um. Yeah, I don't think there's a plot to it, which is the difference. Maybe I don't know. I'm gonna find oh, out. I meant uh, a porn that you're not into. I meant that. that oh, means, that's that says funny. A lot. I'm sorry. That's funny. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is good. I'm sorry. I missed your joke entirely. Oh, no, it's fine. That was a good joke. Oh, we got to watch. You got to mention these on, on the show. This is too good. <laughs> this is way so, too good. I actually have a little more than that that I will talk about as part of this horror thing I'm doing. Okay. And I'll just talk oh, about okay. it all together there. But I wanted to show you firsthand so that way you you can follow up with some retort. Instead of just being surprised, I'll leave this part in the show notes and the what do you call it? The I'll take. Okay. Oh, dude, are you are you looking forward to watching them? Are you nervous at all? That second no. one is a little nerve. It makes me a little nervous. I mean, no. It does it's it movies? Does it say rated X on that one too? Yeah, actually, it's rated three X's, which makes oh. me think it's a porn. But holy shit! Yeah. And they're also they're not available online anywhere. They're gone now. They're not available online. I mean, I mean, like to watch online. I mean, you, there's oh, no oh. streaming option, like at all. This is only physical copies. Holy shit, dude! Both this of is them. Some, some eight millimeter shit, son. Yeah, I was thinking of thesis or or eight millimeter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When I got it, yeah. Except that you know it's faked. It's all fake. We we hope. <laughs> right you know we it's hope. like well if they could fake that cannibal holocaust in 63 that should look uh, real at 63 no, absolutely did and they look too fucking real and somehow that bitch was alive she was not killed that way i don't know if it's true <clears throat> yeah i haven't started it yet we've been watching the um yeah. the fear street on netflix oh i saw that i haven't seen the second one yet i think it just came out right we, we just watched it tonight before I started. How was the second one? It takes place in the 60s, right? Or something? Uh, 78. Okay, 78. <clears throat> so it was 84, 78, and then it's 16, I, I liked 84. I liked 84. I, I did too. It was good, but I think I definitely liked uh, 78 better. I think the way where I should work, and maybe, I mean, you know more than I do now. Um, I was just telling myself, like, the trilogy would work a lot better if it gets more serious along the way somehow. I don't yeah, know how they can do that, but I'm just saying, like, if it gets more, like, maybe more serious, maybe more fucked up, you know, as we unveil more of this witch or whatever's going on. Yeah. Um, I think I will, the, the the trilogy would work a lot better for itself. And hopefully it doesn't stay 
because 84 was kind of also kind of like you know it's like young adults teenagers campy yeah a lot of hijinks a lot of camp yeah and that works fine it's not 84 but like i, I was kind of hoping that they kind of hopefully they play to the decade they're in but um <laughs> yeah I, I i don't know if it was played to the decade per se music was great uh so the music it was great in 84 too um, yeah yeah it was but it, I don't know, maybe a bit more serious. Definitely, I think more gross, more more brutal. Um, more gross than that girl in '84 getting like shoved through that whole slicer thing. That was kind of cool. Dude, that was cool. I've never that seen that cool. before. Yeah, that was. I, I told myself <laughs> that. I said a lot like, "That's a new for me. That's a first for me." Hey, no one's around me. Um, <laughs> no one shared the experience. Lex is hiding in a room. Are you kidding me? Uh, yeah, no, that was really cool. Yeah. Um, maybe. I don't know. I don't see what you think. Yeah, I, yeah. I like the second one better. And it looks like I'll the third it. one is going to be really, really good. Okay. The one set in the Puritan times. I also like the opening of 84. It was cool with the mall and everything. Oh, yeah. I felt, I felt like Stranger Things, but no one gets out alive. <laughs> you know? Nobody. Right, nobody. <laughs> and of course, in of that course mall. <laughs> the, the sister, the redhead, is in yeah. the second one. The sister. Uh, I'm sorry, the sister, the redhead from Stranger Things. Oh, oh really? Uh, yes. Oh, cool. Cool. Yeah. So the ice cream girl was in the first one in 84. She was killed right in the beginning. Yeah. That was the ice cream girl from Stranger Things. Yes. Then, that, that's where I knew her. Thank yes. you. Yes. I, was trying, I was trying to remember, like, where do I know this bitch from? I know I know her. Yeah. Yeah. So she was in that one. And then the sister, cool. the redheaded, I can't remember her name in Stranger Things. No, who cares? But she's in the second one. So yeah. Season kind of four is coming out this year, though, I think. I hope so. I love that show. It's already been two years. Mm-hmm. Feels like it's been four years. Well, COVID, you know, you had an extra. That's like dog year. We went through a dog year last year. <laughs> you know, it was like three that's years. That's so there. right. That's that's what happened to us. Uh, it was painful. I also too keep thinking like, Jesus, it's only been like a, a year and a half since this happened. Like that feels a lot longer. It does. I keep asking like, did that happen last year or was that the year before? Right. Like, yeah. It's it's really weird. Oh. <laughs> re-release yeah. yeah this definitely never went to a theater I'll tell you that mm. just think it's, someone was someone answered a casting call on that show on that movie yeah no it must be like there has to be like friends connections it, ha- it has to be that way it has to be no way you go into a, a film no way a new person a model goes into this Without having known this guy for like five years before or something and knowing that, oh, yeah, he's not going to kill you. He's going to make you look like it. Um, he's, gonna, he's just going to bring you to the brink. Right. I'm, I, again, I have no idea. I can't wait to see it. I don't know how. I don't know anything yet. I'm, this is all speculation. Oh, boy. I mean, if half the stuff happens at this cover, I mean, Jesus, that's already the most one of the most fucked up films I've seen in a while. For sure. For sure. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna only, only my Oscar. Oh, God. Yes. Can't wait for this opening. Okay, you ready? My net, my mesh my mesh puck is in that room, so I could jack right into that puck. Mesh puck? Mesh puck, yeah. That sounds funny. <laughs> it sounds like a title to one of your movies. What the fuck? <laughs> the mesh puck. As, as much as I love horror movies like this, I, 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 I don't think I'd ever make this kind of movie. Oh, I'm, good. I'm glad to hear that. What? I what am glad that? to hear that. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't think you have to be fucked up to make it. You have to be as fucked up to watch it as you as you are to make it. Uh, that's like, true. Like if somebody gave me a blank DVD said watch this movie and I watched this movie blind, that's not my fault. But no, like, no, I this was hailed as a fucked up one of the most recently whatever by a lot. So I three people that I saw online. So I was like, oh, on a whim. I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm in the movie for something fucked up. So I got this on purpose. You I'm did. fucked up too. <laughs> okay? I'm just saying that it's not in my toolbox necessarily. Like, I would rather make a badass action movie or a really cool thriller. Yeah, yeah. Than I would a... A good horror movie. movie. Yeah. Or even, a, I mean, I would love to make a good horror movie, but like, I wouldn't depend on gore at all or anything like that. You know, I would have it tastefully there. I don't know. I mean, I have no idea. I never made one, so I have no idea how crazy I would go. <laughs> God. Well, technically, I have made a, I have made a horror movie, but it was very, very low budget. Um, all right, you ready? 
I think so. You good? <clears throat> Through the, the the video stuff that you read and described and talked about, oh, great. Just I felt great. so bad saying it to the public. Just great. Like I don't mind saying it to you, but to the public, you know, <laughs> like I'll describe the titties and everything to you, but like I don't give a shit. Her intestines are coming out of her pussy here, but like, oh my god, are you serious? That's I couldn't what that tell. Is. Holy shit, dude! You see that? I don't know what that is, but that looks like intestines to me. Um, it could be an umbilical cord, which is probably worse. Is, um, yeah, I don't know what's worse at that point. Jesus. Yeah, it's all pretty bad. Uh, the farm, though, check that out. Though it's pretty hardcore. I, I kind of like soft it. I soft tailed it, but yeah, it's it's uh, it gets there. It gets to places for sure. Really, some, they do some. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I mean, so it's a couple. The guy immediately gets put like, okay, so they enter this this town. I guess the whole town's involved because it has to be right. And like, and it's not a town per se. It's always like off the road, off some side road thing. And it's the movie is from Sweden, so I don't know. They speak English though, so I don't know where they're at. And um, they get told like, oh, you know, the guy wants to go to a hotel or something. And uh, the gas clerk, gas station clerk, sends them to these cabins that they rent out. And instantly, you know, he's like, oh, look at all these cars. It clearly must be full. What they uh -huh. don't know is that they're all victims' cars from before. Oh, they just geez. leave them there. And I knew that instantly, right? You know, the whole time and they get kidnapped and it's like instantly like they take the girl and they they impregnate her right away. But it's not the way you think they impregnate her the way they you would a cow. Like oh they just inject something in there. Well, like while she's barely awake for the first time and then they put her in a room full of other women that they've captured and they are milking them. Ugh. Or a production of milk, like cows. It's in, it's like the whole system, like whole thing in the, like in some sort of half, you know, garage, whatever, a barnyard or whatever they do, and uh, and the men are just putting meal through the grinder. It's like insane. It's holy there. shit. It's pretty crazy. And where did you? Was this on like Netflix or Prime or something? I rented it on iTunes. Right now, oh, you can okay. rent it for a dollar. <laughs> That's why I got it on iTunes. I had and I since I rented it, I saw it right away because I didn't want to like forget about it and then. Have it missed out? So. I, yeah, that's crazy. There were there were a few movies you mentioned on there that actually piqued my interest. So I'm gonna have to, uh, I'll have to contact you at some point when I'm ready to sit down and watch. Them. Yeah, yeah, and obviously I'll see some of them, and then <clears throat> along the way I'll tell you what's good or what's not. Oh man, um, yeah, from Australia. Fucked up, bro. Fucked There's up. another snow movie I'm thinking of that I never finished because I kept falling asleep. Is it Snowtown Murders? No. Was uh, it like Wolf of Snow Hollow? The Snowman or some shit. Like, or like. Oh, no. Oh, with Michael Fassbender. Yes. Ah, oh, that movie sucks. Where the guy like takes the machine. Yeah, no, that movie sucks. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to. I, I think I tried to do it three times and I fell asleep all three times. And Chloe. I almost, I almost fell asleep in the movie theater. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I saw that as part of a review because I was excited. Michael Fassbender, the director of that movie. I forget what he did exactly, but he did some like one or two really good movies that I really like. But that movie sucked, and it sucks because I really wanted a good serial killer movie. Yeah. I just really wanted a good one. It's hard to get good ones, you know. There are the epic ones, of course, like Seven and shit, but they're far and few between, man. And I wanted a <laughs> what is a good one? Yeah. I'm trying to. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and Chloe Savini was in that movie, and that's right. She was one of like the twins that gets killed towards the end. I, I kind of remember that. That's yeah, familiar. I don't think I even made it that far. No, she did. I did. I did see her. Get oh, killed. Yeah. yeah. And the snowman, you know, the character's name was Harry Hole. I'm not kidding you. Are you serious? Man. Detective Harry Hole. Oh they expected God. us to be to take that seriously. And I'm like, come <laughs> on, man. Uh, Thomas Alfredson did the movie. He did Let the Right One In, the vampire movie. Oh, okay. In Sweden that I really, really like. And he also did Tinker Taylor, Soldier Spy, which is not a horror movie, but still really good. But yeah, I really wish that uh, he nailed that one. He did not. Um, but I did forget to mention the um, that we both saw Fear Street. That's a horror movie right there. What was it? Fear Street. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, on the other one, I also rewatched The Strangers. Uh, oh, actually, I'm halfway through that movie, and I rewatched The Shining. Like I said, I'm watching a lot of horror movies, so I'm getting into it. Nice. Good. Yeah about putting the dun 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 and all this I like completely forgot yeah, that's why yeah. it wasn't in there it wasn't because I didn't think I it wasn't because I was like lying to you or like um thought it was no. a bad idea I just forgot <laughs> so, no <laughs> it's okay <laughs> so, yeah and, that was my bad 
what happened was I listened to that that part twice, the previously on, yeah. because the first time I, I maybe I was distracted or something, but I didn't pick up on when the news story picked up from the previously part. Oh yeah, you're right. That should have been something. That should have been something there. I mean, there was a pause. There was, was. Like three, there was three seconds. I, I I purposely put in there, but I didn't put like a like a bumper sound. Yeah, um, but on the second time I caught the point. I, I, like I said, maybe I was just distracted the first time I heard it. Yeah, and I was. Yeah, yeah. if you're paying attention, you don't, you definitely don't miss it. But if you're not, you can miss it easily. You could think that you're still. Are we like? Are we starting the show yet? Yeah, I, I but no, it's. That. It's, it's cool. still on me though. I should have put something in there. You're right, and I just I completely forgot. Just Next time, the mind. That's it. Next time. I mean, we did uh, record that under the gun, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's what kind of did it too. I probably forgot because of that. It's okay. Um, I I almost made a huge mistake on the first show where because I, I also didn't put much Miriam stuff on the part two, but in the part one when I used her a lot more, um, I. Uh, I very nearly put in the wrong translation Ooh. <laughs> as one of, as like I said, like, oh, the following is from this. And I put the wrong one in and I almost didn't catch it before I did the final, like, what do you call it? Uh, exporting. And, um, and I like, and I went back like, wait, that's on the wrong. No, that's on the wrong. And I went back and wow. I like, caught it barely. I'm like, Jesus Christ, I almost fucked that up. So I had to check all the other clips just to make sure. Oh no! But no, it's, it's okay. Catch, I caught it. Though. But uh, damn, I almost put the wrong thing, and people would be like, "What the fuck is she talking about? This is not what Oscar <laughs> said." If she was gonna say, "Are you gonna watch Black Widow?" I don't know. Maybe, maybe just to see cameos or something. Or I mean, see... I know the the movie's like three years too late, but yeah, feel yeah, it definitely feels that way. Yeah, yeah. I was talking to someone about a customer about this today about like Black Widow and how like the uh, Marvel is good with the race stuff mainly, but not very great with the with the women stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I know but, it's uh, it's supposed yeah, to yeah. set up something new, and you know I'm sure there's cool cameos in it. I would like to see that. Uh, but yeah, I watch it for Scarjo, and I like the I like the Black Widow character. So, um, and we're reviewing it for the show. So, <laughs> oh yeah. Well, let me know what you think. I guess it's like thirty bucks on Amazon right now. <laughs> nah, I have AMC stubs it's free. Yeah, no, it's good. Yeah. So. Oh, okay. I saw I saw yeah. Fast Nine too. Oh no! Mm-hmm. Was it just so ridiculous that you you're... know I love these movies, Jay? Oh, God. You know, I love my action the way I love my horror. Fucking ridiculous and over the top. <laughs> nice. Uh-huh. No, no. It is ridiculous and over the top. They're basically superheroes. It's fucking amazing. And they're drinking Corona is where they do it. It's fucking awesome. I love it. Oh, I'll watch God. it again. I've never gotten into any of those movies. I don't think I've seen one. That's good. You don't have to. If if it was for you, you would have known by now. So Yeah. yeah. Um, but there's so much fun. Why would you say love, Tom? <laughs> At the end. Right, there, just slip it right in there. You just have to slip it in there. What am I? A model that's over 21 <laughs> hired to do a fucking fucked up show? That's you it it does you you hit it on the head. It adds heaviness or weight to that movie by saying they're all over 21. Yeah. Oh my god. Like if if the movie opens with them showing the their signed and the signed license plate, birth certificates, and birth certificate, and everything. Like I'll be like, "Holy shit, what am I about to watch?" Right? How do you not worry? And then I'll get excited because I really, really like fucked up horror movies. I yeah, really do. On the show, I'm like, "Yeah, we'll do a watch party by your house." I don't know if I want. I, I, I don't know that I want to see that stuff. No, I would have to. I would say I would watch this one by myself first. I cannot tell you about it. And if you want to see it, I can show it together. Oh, I can show it to you. No, but some of these movies, we should totally, you should totally come over and watch something. 